What terrifies me sometimes is that some of the points that a Chomskyan will make overlap with fragments of points that a Candace will make. Well, that's and because that's, a lo- that's enough to give me IBS. So here's for, the thing for a week, but that's not new, right? It's not new. The the thing is, like the right wingers have always been way more aware of optics than left wingers. Here, you you got to come a little bit, a little bit. Uh, My God, boom! I'm looking at the chat. I I remember from last time you were like, "Don't read it." Yeah. Oh yeah. No, it's always a mistake. Oh, I'm seeing some. Dave is looking like a fashion aware version of yourself. Um, I've I've been, you know, you went to Coachella. I went to Coachella. You were rocking some incredible fits. I was rocking some fits. I got blasted for uh, it being ugly, and then also it being too expensive. About a Gucci shirt. You own any Gucci shit? Own a single piece of Gucci? No. God damn. That was my first piece of uh, Gucci that I ever purchased, and it was a bad decision. Uh, he said, introduce your guest. I'm Dave from Chromio. Dave One from Chromio. Yeah, we got Dave um, One, David Maklovich in the building. Turn up Dave a little bit. I'll move closer. Hold on. But I got I can't be reading all this because it's going to drive me crazy. Oh, yeah. Um, it 100% what what was will drive me crazy. Hassan? So what was your Gucci gate? I mean, so I, I'm assuming, let me guess. So I'm assuming that you've got some people calling out the paradox between... Uh, your oh, yeah. radical leftist views and the oh, fact yeah. that you're wearing a $1,100 shirt at Coachella, right? Yeah. 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 100%. And so how do you clap back to that? Um. Well, one, I, well, I'll, fl- I, I'll let you finish typing. How I clap back to that is the same as like, I've done other, uh, you know, uh, ridiculous commodity consumption purchases before. And it's always the same shit. We're, we're sitting in one. I mean, this house is, yeah, this uh, house is, is, I mean, I think it's nice. It's a normal it's, house. Yeah. You have a nice house. You have a very nice house. I sold the LA house, but it was very nice. Well, you, oh, you all, but I'm just talking like it's very well decorated. Oh yeah, that's my brother's place. Wherever yeah. you stay, yeah. it's, it's very well decorated. So for me, it's just like the reason why I got it. The reason the why I got the shirt was because I I felt very uh, I felt insecure. Mm. I had another shirt that I had on that uh-huh. morning, and like everyone is dressed to the <laughs> nines. You know how Coachella is. Of it's course. about like of course. It's literally about like uh, you know getting uh, showing up and like influencing. It's not about yeah. the music at all for the most. Unfortunately part. for people like me, but okay. Yeah, I mean for you it's about the music. Uh-huh. You're an artist. But for me and and for others, it's more so about, you know, influencer shit, you know, being uh, taking photos with your outfits or whatever the f- do you want anything to drink, by the way? I could get something, but finish your story. I'm, I'm at, cause it's, it's, I think, I mean, you know, I don't follow, I mean, I, people should know that we're friends Yeah. And that, you know, I think safe to say we have a lot of mutual respect for each other and, yeah. and we have, um, and we have similar opinions on a lot definitely, of matters. We'll, we'll get into that, but I don't follow, you know, the controversies surrounding. Yeah. You're a normal person. That's why you only have the Chromio account on Twitter and you know, not I'll like, see, like when there's a big article and I'll hit you up, bro. I'm so proud of you, blah, blah, blah. but I don't follow, you know, the, the, the attempted takedowns or whatever all that stuff so but but i'm assuming you know there, there, some people call out what they see as a paradox so i wanted to see kind of yeah. what um what how you reacted to that well first of all i do Somebody i goes wait he's 43 years old <laughs> do i first of all do i think that it's a stupid purchase 100 yeah. percent. but yeah. i but i should be allowed to make stupid purchases i'm also not uh anti you know, buying things that would even for a brief moment make you feel good. You know what I mean? If you like, I, I like fashion. I think that that's uh, totally fine. I've talked about how like commodity consumption is a good way to dull the masses and it's a necessity for control. And I think that it's like the one redeeming, well, not redeeming, but like one aspect of neoliberalism that I think even socialists need to understand and and even utilize this is something I talked about a lot. I'm a hedonist, like I openly admit it. So on that, in that sense, like I, um, I don't think that it's like outside of the scope and that I should be allowed to fucking make stupid purchases from time to time you know what i mean so you 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 answer with kind of like a, no, a healthy r- dose of self-awareness yeah no 100 yeah. percent. i'm not gonna be like oh it's an absolute necessity to the socialist movement that i purchase a shirt no of course not it's dumb as fuck. like right, right but you make dumb purchases all the time chatters and no one holds you accountable for your actions because it's just not something you would ever do that's precisely why uh what do you call it most most people would never do this to other celebrities that they appreciate and enjoy uh one of the things that like actually uh, made me really upset was there was someone who was like hassan is a bad person like literally mm. they said like hassan a lot of people were saying that wow. but they were literally saying like uh you know there's another youtuber okay. also has long hair and they were basically saying that um mark what, what's the fa- what's the name of the YouTuber chat? There's a tweet, basically, someone saying, like, Markiplier, who's, like, a very nice YouTuber, very kind gentleman. Uh-huh. Uh, Markiplier is what Hassan would be like if he was a good person, but he's, like, a bad person. I was uh-huh. like, 
this dude's like way richer than me. You know what I mean? This dude's worth $38 million. And Jesus. you're saying like, if your metric of why I'm an evil person is because I have money, okay, and I spend it, then how the fuck are you going to compare me to someone who's like way wealthier than me and, and say they're a good person in comparison? Like, I think it's okay to say that you hate this kind of consumption. Like you, you despise it personally. That could be your thing. Mm. That's one thing. Mm. But to say that it's like, it shows hypocrisy or you're a bad person or, you know, I'm evil or anything like that. I, 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 that I take issue with. Like they try to, a lot of people on the internet can't just say, oh, I don't like that guy. Mm. Or, oh, I didn't like that move. They right. have to turn it into some kind of moral crusade. They have to moralize their criticism. They have yeah. to couch their criticism in some like additional layer of like intellectual thought when no such thing exists. I also think that like, it, I, I think it's fair game, right? Because you're, you're now a complete public personality, way more than when we first met. And you are, and it, same with me to some degree, as a musician and um you know we expose ourselves to that and it's fair game and i think i think all the little jabs in the chat rooms we just got to take it with you know kind of a, a sense of humor a sense of self-awareness i love when people clown me like i don't know i, I it's fine it's part of the package no you know? I, I we're, we're exposing ourselves to that and that's okay there's you know i i um i grew up i grew up immersed in in french culture uh, because I grew up in Montreal and um, I looked, <laughs> this dude goes Waldo looking, I, bro, I am Waldo. Um, uh, so I grew up in Montreal, Canada, and there was a lot of exposure to French culture. And my parents are, um, well, my mom's from Morocco. So, you know, we grew up like kind of reading French media and following French politics, which I'm also doing right now. Uh, other topic of conversation, but in, in French culture, there is a, a long tradition of what they call the caviar left, you know? Oh yeah. That's exists everywhere. Yeah. 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 But it's in America, champagne, it's a, champagne, socialism. champagne social. In America, it's a little bit newer because the term socialism is only, you know, sort of socially acceptable as of 10 years right so yeah so i think it's it's um it's a paradox that people will be quick to point out and it's legitimate and it's up to people like you to defend yourself Man, yeah those and i and i use it well, i yeah, use, use it I, whatever, I use these right? like cancellations as an attempt you like originally uh originally i literally use the like, cancellations like this as an attempt to i guess like educate people to be like listen you're being ridiculous you're falling into the reactionary framing that mm. like socialism is a poverty cult it's not it's not a poverty cult it's about like ensuring that everyone gets to be able to experience certain things that everyone gets to be able to uh, have lead fulfilling lives and gets more from their labor. Yep. Like it's nothing about, uh, you know, being, uh, destitute uh, and and live in like horrid gray conditions right. but, that's right wing framing right but at the same time you know if you're gonna walk around or i'm gonna walk around whatever with a with a fancy item of clothing or you know with with a fancy watch um like fidel did he had two <laughs> yeah shades. i think back in the day the rolex was more like uh nah. was more no you don't nah, think so i thought rolex nah. i thought rolex wasn't as fancy back why in the was day. he wearing two i don't know he's <laughs> you know? probably flexing <laughs> yeah definitely my man was flexing good um, for him but you know you got to you just got to be able to, you got to have your defense ready and you have to also, I think, you know, be able to, like you did, inject some nuance. I know with Chromio personally, like, you know, some, some people may call us out, but we're, we're always sure to like, you know, we do a lot of fundraising, raise a lot of money for a lot of causes, a lot of donations and so on. So we, we try to also keep that aspect healthy more so in the last few years. And one of my biggest regrets is that we didn't start sooner, but, um, in the last few years, that's been like a huge part of what we do anyway. Um, See, look, a Rolex originally purchased for just ninety dollars in the early nineteen sixties, sold for a quarter million at auction. Yeah, yeah Rolex used know to be that, like, I don't, I, I need more receipts than that. We I'm got almost some, certain, really? like, I'm almost certain Rolex is did not used to be considered a luxury good because they would give it to pensioners. Like, would, it was an indication yeah, and, that you and, got your gold Rolex yes, watch and, as a working was, class person. And was, okay, and there was also the the old corporate ones. You can still find like a Honda Rolex or you know like yeah, those yeah, old exactly. Corporate. Those are fire. Um, let's okay, but what did we, what did we, um. What do we come to talk about? Or I mean, I, I'm happy to freeform freestyle with you too. Yeah, I mean, we don't we don't have to talk about like anything uh, specific. I just um. But, but if, so what? What were you gonna discuss today? What was so on a day like today? I don't watch all your streams, so like uh -huh. a day like today rolls around. Yeah, you're, you're like a healthy person. That's why you're you're, uh, <laughs> you're you're streaming. You're gonna do this for how many hours? Uh, I started off at 11. I'll probably keep going until like 6 p.m. 7 p.m. Okay, so you're you're here all day. Yeah, there's gonna be some. You're gonna go over what memes you're going to talk about yeah. russia you're going to talk about ukraine you're going to talk about palestine you're going to talk about you had some you know what 
you basically go over. Yeah, the I latest. started out with Amber Heard, Johnny Depp trial. Right, I'm, I'm glad. Like, I'm glad I missed that part because yeah, not, I don't follow. Yeah, there was uh, you know, there's like a huge thing uh, going on. It's uh, like very public. Uh, yeah. We talked about. I the, mean, I, I I I superficially followed. Okay. Yeah. Uh, there's then. Marjorie Taylor Greene who's being questioned oh. right now for her oh, involvement is it, is that in her January six. Yeah. Jesus. Okay. Um, but that was kind of boring, so I didn't really cover that. But that's, usually yeah, that's, that's what I do, and then I um I get to some other news stories that i wanted to get to that day uh, and then um and then i do the chat is crazy i don't know how you do to not and wait sorry to interrupt Hassan. are there three different chats or is all is no no, no all it's one? all the same chat but My it's God, uh how do you i just not... have it open at all times so i can read. like Hi, catch Chromium. it no 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 i do read it so i read fun. everything he that's a big problem so actually okay. okay so so um, Someone said they they wore two Rolexes so that if one broke on a mission, they wouldn't fuck up the timing. Do you think Fidel did that? I think Fidel was flexing. Maybe. Yeah. And also, but I think that's Che fine. was on more missions than Fidel, and Che only had one. That. But the other thing is, like, I think that's fine. I I, I get annoyed when people are just like, no, you have to live like Jesus Christ if you're mm -hmm. a socialist. It's like, no, dude. Normal people should not be expected to hit that fucking standard. Like, you have to pay your taxes like yeah, a socialist. Of course, you've got to. Um, and if you're in France, if you're in that that 60% bracket you got to rock mean, I'm with pretty, it I'm as close to that bracket as possible <laughs> I live in California you know Same. what I mean like uh, you got to rock with that I'm at I'm at a flat 55 right you now gotta you got to rock know? with that no nope. and that's fine I paid a lot fine. of fucking money to the government and I'm happy to do so I and wish I more of it went to like education Same, instead of the police but it doesn't but matter that's your swag tax and then I think there's got to be you know regular contributions regular donations to things you believe in yeah and, which and, I do as well yeah and, and encouraging people to do you know kind of yeah I think I think that um I think that's a big part of it. Um, All of that I do already, but of course people don't care about that. Uh, right. There's a lot, just a lot of people who are basically like they hyper focus on. I have uh, multiple hate watching communities at this point. They're just like hyper focus on everything I do that like right. is can be used against me. Sure. And that's, originally that's it was also a fair game. Originally it was a it was a joke like right. that my editor posted being like you guys call this guy a socialist like look at how expensive his shirt is uh -huh. he's on a private jet uh -huh. and like the private jet photo should have indicated that it was a joke because it's like from 2018 when uh, uh, I was uh, doing an award show immediately after Coachella. Right. So they okay. flew, they were like, we have a private jet that's flying out if you want to hitch a ride. Looks so Middle Eastern, somebody said. I'm actually half, I'm half Moroccan and my dad's family is originally from Ukraine. Like, oh, uh, yeah. like a lot of Ashkenazi Jewish people. Yeah. Um, but basically, that was what popped off. And people were like, he's right. riding in a private jet. I'm like, dude, I'm a normal person. Like, if someone well, no, is like... no, a normal person doesn't ride a private jet. No, 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 no. I'm a, Well, in 2018, I was an even more normal person. Uh -huh. If someone was like, do you want to hitch a ride in this private jet? I'm, I'm not going to be like, no. So you never think about like, I hate that word, but you never think about the... The uh, optics. The optics. <laughs> In 2018, <laughs> fuck no. no. And it, even okay. now, if someone was like, "Hey, there's a private jet that is like taking off this airport," it, it, you know, it, you want to hitch a ride? You want to hitch a ride? I'm, you're gonna say no to that? You're gonna be like, "Sorry, no, I'm a." Can I be on? Okay, I have. So I, I would. I'm just being honest. Yeah, I would 100 yeah, Well, you got places that. to be. Have you? Um, I don't know what how you grew up. I I grew up in a fairly modest. Uh, family and there are still spaces or um experiences that make me uncomfortable or where you know there, there's that does happen sometimes i have to like i don't know i have to dj let's say i dj at like surf lodge in montauk mm -hmm. I've, I've been there you've been there sometimes the vibe is like i agree with that it's very aspen and i, I i've also played live at aspen a lot and i 100 percent agree with that. that it makes me feel weird like i remember like overhearing conversations you know and and being like uh, I, I think a younger version of me would have felt very very excluded and i'm still uncomfortable and i still want to see everybody's tax you know i want to see their tax filings that makes me uncomfortable Anyways. i 100 agree right, with cool. that so whenever i'm in circles like that as a consequence of what i do or you know my friends are like hey le let's go to dinner or whatever like i because i have a group of friends yeah. and we've all gotten older throughout the years yeah and uh, and some of them have become very successful yes. financially right yeah, financially and i'm 30 years old you know it's like normal we were all broke as couch yeah. surfing yeah. you know 10 years ago and now these motherfuckers are wealthy as shit uh -huh. and those people and You're the conversations and yeah and the oh, conversations God, in their in the conversations in their group of friends yeah. is disgusting is abhorrent they're all 
like not my friends, but like their friends oh. are in a lot of instances like very close to Republican if they're not oh, just boy. straight up Republican. Right. The one that kills me is fiscally conservative. Yeah, I just yeah, I'm I'm socially liberal, but fiscally conservative. That's the like, word. That's up. that's the one that kills just me. Just conservative. So okay. that that stuff is. Tesla. I saw that. I love, some of these chat comments are funny. Like I, I love. I mean, that's why you gotta steal their jokes yeah, all the time. They I love like it when them. you do that. I like just steal them. their jokes and say everyone it as is it's fiscally yours. conservative. I'm not fiscally conservative. I don't like that. Yeah, anyway, me whatever. either. Um, um, so I, I do see what you're saying in that front, but yeah. like, like I said, if I like having an opportunity to be on a private jet, like I'm going to take it, you know, yeah. it's like mm -hmm. super easy method of transportation. I've only been on one once. See, honestly, there one you time. go. So yeah. you went on a private jet too. One time for a cancel gig. Him. Okay. Cancel me. <laughs> and I, and I, there's a story we were going to miss our gig and then, and we were like, got to go to work. Got to try to make this, but I've never, I don't know. I've never chartered a private jet you right. know what i mean like Some that's I, I, I would not do that i don't think there i'll put, put it to you like this there's a lot more substantial things that i would base my judgment of someone on than whether or not i see him on a pj yeah but it was also a joke regardless because it was like from 2018 it wasn't like i flew in and my hair is like so different too in the photo but people didn't care they were just like fuck you i also want to call I'm out so something I, there's angry. something i read that i actually like um somebody said i'm fiscally conservative with my little money and that actually touches me in a weird way because i remember when i was like an academic i earned i had a seventeen thousand dollar a year stipend and that's what i was living on and you can bet that I was fiscally conservative. I didn't want to pay any tax. So like, there's also something, again, this, this self-awareness, there's something very bourgeois about us. And we have to, we have to admit it about us being like, I'm not fiscally conservative. Tax me 65%. That means that you have enough to live yeah. on your 45 comfortably. Yeah, no, uh, for 35. sure. <laughs> Sorry, my math was wrong. Um, no, no, I, I agree yeah. 100%. Okay. Um, oh my God. But that's why, I mean, the tax, uh, the tax system is regardless like you're as a percentage of your like end of the year earnings the percentage that you're paying as a working class person is incredibly high in comparison to in, 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 in comparison to like Correct. Elon Musk, correct. We should talk about who pays be my, nothing. Be my guest and bro. is awful. Yeah. And you know yeah. when that mother is like fiscally conservative, I'm like. You, you piece of shit You're especially because right. his entire empire is built on subsidies that he has gotten from the government there's not yeah. a single business that elon musk has operated since paypal uh that that doesn't heavily rely on the government subsidizing right. it and we should appreciate what he does right normally like theoretically speaking renewable energy guy right, right? right, 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 right and right, and right. i want uh government subsidies to help out renewable energy rather than the 85 percent of yeah. subsidies going to fossil fuel industry yes right? yes 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 i should yes like that. that i should like that however in theory but when elon musk is such a piece of shit so awful so relentlessly awful and like talking about how like taxes are bad or whatever yeah. i'm like mother that they funded your business yeah. and still continue to do so yeah it's just very 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 frustrating yeah yeah i mean yeah. There's, there's the there's the uh the entitlement the uh hyper capitalist impunity there's the um trolley discourse that's so corny uh, yeah it's it's hard it's very hard yeah so go ahead you want and then unload. the workplace abuses and all that stuff that comes out it's hard yeah yeah it's it's i i have trouble go ahead what else you want to say about elon musk no, i good. feel like I'm he's good. the what well, go I'm on good. no I'm, go on unload say what you want to say no i'm uh, uh, Everything Elon Musk businesses do is possible without Elon Musk. Of course, of course, he's a CEO. CEOs are not necessary for value. CEOs don't add value. Labor adds value. Without labor, there is no value. Without the CEO, you can totally still have value. The persona bothers me a lot. Yeah. The 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 narcissism and the persona. And he's the, the inventor. He's the Tony. But Stark. he didn't even invent. Like exactly. I heard this thing about Tesla, where like it wasn't even. I mean, I don't. It was know. a I, company already. It was yeah. an EV company that he bought into yeah. that he like literally forcibly kicked off the actual founders from yeah and then now he acts like he invented tesla like he invented it he invented the cars if you ask his fucking simps they literally the act like they act like he invented the tesla when yeah. he did not what does your audience think of him oh Thank they you. They hate him. Okay. Right. Yeah. No, we, I rip into Elon Musk all the time. I do not so, think he's a good person. I think he's a very bad person. I think he's the perfect manifestation of like everything that is wrong with capitalism. With, with late stage yeah. capitalists. Like the way that he operates, the way that he presents himself, the way that there's so much admiration associated the with The megaphone. Them. The megaphone he has. That. The legitimate, the political 
discursive legitimacy he has. Yeah. And also, perhaps worst of all, like, and you kind of see a part of this with like the NFT craze. Uh. There is this weird thing about like being financially associated with a person, with a brand mm. that adds into like the parasocial relationship that you have where like people have also bought into Tesla. So they value Tesla's success sure. and they want Tesla to continue being successful. Sure. So it like doubles down. So it might mm. be the early infatuation with Elon Musk and the brand mm. that he's created for himself that mm. gets you into like w loving Tesla as a brand, but then you buy into it further. Right. So now you're also financially vested in its uh, success. Sure. And a lot of people that write about Teslas and EVs are exactly like that, which is a big problem. So they continue this cycle of like mm. positive PR for Elon Musk, no matter what happens. I'm no longer a PhD candidate and lecturer for chat. I heard, so it's, it's, chat and not the chat it's just you just go just chat. Say chat yeah no article okay gotcha um well chat i am no longer a phd candidate and lecturer but i was okay well yeah that's uh, that's a good spiel i mean i'm more maybe because i was studying literature or, or whatever and my my dad is a linguist my dad is a chomsky linguist segue um but i'm more i'm i'm very sensitive to like discourse social discourse and the ramifications that that has in in a culture at a given point in time and i think that his um elon's discursive style bothers me but you know that's maybe for another thing yeah it just i just don't like um i don't know i just don't like everything he represents yeah. i i despise everything he he represents so yeah. a lot of fanboys became millionaires from the stock so there is buy-in that's what i was saying exactly um so other than elon musk we got noam chomsky did you read the the I article did, in current yeah, affairs what i did do you think and, I, and i was reading other ones because dave here is pro nato and i am not No, i didn't want to say that i you was i was trolling you by text it's not true oh you were yes. oh okay yeah i thought i thought well no, you, I mean, you are I'm, ukrainian though we were gonna talk about russia ukraine if i mean you want. i'm not my background's ukraine you know most mo so most uh most Ashkenazi Jewish people. So I'm half Moroccan, half... My mom is from Morocco. She's a Moroccan immigrant um, and very much identifies as, as an Arab Jew. Um, and we could talk about we could talk about Palestine too. I would love to. But, yeah. um, but on my father's side, we're, we're Ashkenazi Jews. And the, the vast majority of Ashkenazi Jews who live here in North America are from a region called the Pale of Settlement. And that little region encompassed Ukraine. Um, yeah. When my great-great-grandfather immigrated and ended up in you know i think ellis island or something he didn't even know where he was from but it was ukraine so yeah um but i, I don't want to say i'm pro nato and I, I actually think what's crazy is that you know everybody's got a different silo and a different echo chamber and in my echo chamber the points that chomsky makes are kind of just like it feels like common sense i don't even know why he got into trouble like please give me insight on what well the reason what why he got what he said about what's controversial about saying don't the, send missiles and avoid nu uh, and avoid nuclear warfare avoid nuclear holocaust don't yes. send missiles yes and if the where's primary, the controversy and if the primary concern is like the livelihood and lives of ukrainians, of ukrainians you have to immediately find a diplomatic some kind of half-assed diplomatic we know it's going to be half-assed but some kind of diplomatic end to this that's what he says where's the controversy the controversy is that uh i think americans have this attitude especially in the west like westerners have this attitude that they've been conditioned by years and years of manufactured consent to have like a you're with us or you're against this kind of attitude a black and white attitude a good and evil attitude <sighs> okay. When it comes to analyzing any kind of uh, foreign politics, any kind of international relations, and um, the in the post 9/11 universe that we live in, this was an instance for yeah, so many said, people. Fight to the last man, I saw that. Yeah, uh, this was an instance for so many people to just be like, okay, this is it. We are finally not like the main villain of the story, and as a matter of fact, we're the good guys in the story uh, against Russia, who are the bad guys. And there's no other like. Uh, there's no other reason uh, for why this is happening other than like Russia's bloodthirsty ways and all Russians are bad. So can, I, they... can I interject something, Hassan? Go ahead. Because what you're saying is 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 interesting and it's, it's probably symptomatic of like the, say, echo chamber or the silo that yeah. you're in. In my silo, what bothers, I mean, I guess for some reason, you know, I don't know who I follow or whatever, but in my silo, I don't have that binary as much. And in my silo, what bothers me, and I want to address that because it's something that I have a lot of trouble with. With, is that on the one hand, you'll have a discourse that's critical of NATO like yours. You'll have a discourse that favors a some kind of diplomatic-ish solution. You can't have diplomacy with 
Putin and, and even Chomsky acknowledges that. Yeah. But there's going to be a disgusting compromise made, but more lives will be saved. And that's something that Chomsky acknowledges, right? Yeah. So you'll have that on one hand. And then when I doom scroll Chernovich, I don't know if that's how I pronounce his name, right? Or or what, like Candace Owens and shit? Yes. I have no idea what the fuck they're saying. See, because I doom scroll that. When I, I when I want to have insomnia, that's I doom scroll. I am. It's not good. good. When I I don't know what this is pure masochism and I'll doom scroll. And when I doom scroll the best rhetoricians on the extreme right, Mm -hmm. what do I find? Are they pro Russia or something? I don't know. Of course not. They're they're No, they're not pro Russia, but they're very there's a lot of two sides. There's a lot of criticism of NATO because for them, NATO is like, you know, it's the American Illuminati, basically. Right. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of, well, we have to negotiate because they just, they're not interventionists. Right. So what, what, but then at, at, after that, there'll be, you know, crazy paranoid things about like the images in Busha are fake and so on and so forth. Yeah. 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 Crazy shit. But if I, if I ignore those, which truly give me insomnia, what terrifies me sometimes is that some of the points that a Chomskyan will make overlap with fragments of points that a Candace will make. Well, that's and because that's, a lo- that's enough to give me IBS. So here's <laughs> for, the thing for a week, but that's not new, right? It's not new. The The thing is like right wing, uh, the right wingers have always been way more aware of optics than left wingers because yeah. their, uh, their ideology is disgusting and really violent for the most part. <laughs> so they know how to try to uh, They've got the rhetoric pragmatically yeah, 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 yeah. sell it as yeah. though it's not. Give Dave and a drink. Give me a drink. Yeah, Sorry. what do you want? Is that mine? Yeah, sure. You it's can fine. have that yeah, if you fine. want. Cool. Thank you. Um, I also have like a bunch of other uh, beverages too. I'm good with this. Okay. So, you know, I mean, white power was created as a reactionary movement against black power. Yeah, yeah. So uh, same with like, you know, the, the pro-life movement. Like so they're you not never, pro-life. You never do. You never doom scroll what no, your all the time. You you have equivalents. You have there's the Hassans of the other spectrum. Yeah. Do you doom scroll them sometimes? Yeah, all the time. I mean, I look at Ben Shapiro. I look at Stephen Crowder. There are definitely ben, ben uh, lengths that I don't ben go Shapiro to. Ben Shapiro is dumber than like he's not even your equivalent. He's so daft. There's no there's no self awareness. He's very smart. He's just like he he's very good at. at he's mid, to me, he's middle of the road. He's very good at couching his like horrifying reactionary agenda in right. in in terms that are more appealing. common sense. Yeah, his whole thing, right? In terms that are more appealing to like I can't with him the Normans. <laughs> um, but but like Cernovich, I think is like just insane. So I don't even look at that. I'm like that's. But you know, like I'll give you an example, right? And this is, I mean, chat. I don't know how you how you'll react to this. Um, the punitive measures against some Russian artists in North America scandalize me. Oh yeah, it's so fucked up. Candace, Candace rails against it, and rightly so. When I found myself agreeing with a thread of Candace tweets, there's a problem. I, well, it's not the over it, the overlap is there. We agree. I mean, on that point, on that little ideological nugget, we agree with her. You know what the issue is there? And I've talked about this with uh, respect to Tucker Carlson a lot. What does Tucker Carlson do? Tucker Carlson is a white supremacist. I think mm-hmm. you and I both know this, right? We acknowledge it. One hundred percent. He is a he's a white nationalist, he's a white supremacist. Yes. And what Tucker Carlson does really good is rail against corporations. Yeah. Uh, that he picks and chooses, obviously, even po- though he's populist, literally... Populist talking points, right? Yeah, he yeah. does a really good job of, like, instilling right-wing populism yep. and making maintaining this presence that he's, like, pro-worker, pro-labor, yep. when he fucking is not. He's a libertarian that works for Fox News, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and what I've always said about Tucker Carlson is that if the left cannot have prominence in mainstream media, we are ceding ground to the right to make these arguments... And that's they a, are not doing it from a genuine point, point yeah, of view. Yeah, that's a good point. So They're not doing it yeah. from a genuine point of view. They're doing it to to actually serve yes. their higher purpose, which is nationalism. They are trying to one of their or capitalism, but you are yeah, what capitalism, you're saying, nationalism, but fascism. They're, they're they're trying to siphon away a working class. By the way, they're not trying. They succeeded. They're siphoning away working class voters. They've done that, by the way, successfully. Yeah. Um. And, and Reagan invented that. Yeah. Um, I mean, I you don't know. think Reagan personally. Invented I don't know. It, I'm saying Reagan like era, Reagan pioneered that. He's Reagan the one who turned. Politics, yeah. He's the he turned the South right, right? Yeah. There is there's uh there's and, a and lot we're of seeing that. it happen again in the in the in the Rust Belt. Anyways, point is, I agree with you. What what I think is important to me is that the criticism that we articulate, let's say if it's in the Chomsky way, right? So 
we want some, it's going to be a painful, painful diplomatic ish solution to this conflict. But that's, that's what it's going to be if we don't want nuclear destruction or if we don't want Ukrainians to keep being senselessly murdered. Right. Um, but what we voice, or if you, you voice a certain criticism of NATO, um, I think it's our duty to do it in a way that is radically different than the Chernoviches or the Candaces or the populist right-wing hypocrites. That's my whole thing. I feel like you didn't listen to what I just no, said. No, I did. No, I agree. <laughs> I'm thinking of like how to do that, how to best do uh, Well, that's why I doom scroll. That's why I doom scroll their how shit because I'm like, that in a I want to see like how they say it so I could say it different. And, and I, the, the frustrating yeah. part about that, however, the frustrating part about that is that like, uh, I think because because of the way that people because of the approach that people have to like covering these sorts of things the good evil dichotomy that i was just mentioning yeah. and and how like preconditioned they are to to you know approach these kinds of subjects in yeah. that kind of fervor or we don't negotiate with terrorists like you're either with us what or does that mean i'm squirrel us. confirmed sorry what? go on no no we don't See, i know you're doing saying. the thing now yeah, I, I can't yeah. it's so addictive i just want to say to chat this is like one of my first time doing this so i'm i'm very i'm sorry i'm distracted so you say yeah but it's so funny like like for me we live i'm i'm my my feed or whatever it is is so post dichotomy already that I'm like, so, and that, that my big, my day-to-day -day concern is basically, all right, this person's criticism of Israel is actually rooted in their personal anti-Semitism. And this person's criticism of Israel is absolutely legit. Their tweet, their 140 character tweet might be almost the same. Yeah. How do I tell one from another? That's the world that I'm living in total post dichotomy uh molasses <laughs> yeah no you're pdm it's just you can't there is like sometimes it's virtually indistinguishable yeah. especially because yeah like i said uh there's a big error in the liberal side which dominates mainstream media yeah. that refuses to allow left-wing perspectives to be heard which is why the only time you hear uh any kind of sentiment that is critical of israel you only hear it from reactionaries who are like anti-semitic and that's why they're like oh yeah why are we giving money to israel F you because jews control our government and it's right. like well no but then but so for the average liberal for yeah. the average like normie who doesn't care about this sort of stuff or hasn't yeah. thought about this deeply it's virtually indistinguishable because the only times that they've heard it is from anti-semites it's hard but and I the think... same with like anti-nato sentiment right. or anything right, right, like right, that right, they've right, only right. heard exactly. it from cernovich so they're like what the this guy's supposed to be a leftist. He sounds like Cernovich. What is this? And it's that's what that's what keeps me up at night. It's the it's that overlap in in discourse. But you know, and I think I mean I've I've, I've talked about this before because um, one of the reasons you know I think that that we became friends is that we're both from kind of like um, hybrid backgrounds, right? Yeah. And, and men, we, uh, men of boys, better boys, I know. <laughs> yeah. men of boys, and we've and we've. And those paradoxes, I think, were uh, crucial to the development of our thinking. And, you know, f for my part, I'm, uh, I, uh, sorry, uh, I just clicked on a link. Oh my God. Oh my God. Uh, I don't know what the f going on oh here. Oh my God. I was going to talk about Jewish identity and, and my, and my, we can, we can get my, back to and that. my pro Palestine views, but, but then no, I got, but see, this is what they do. <sighs> We're about to talk about something smart, and then Madison okay, comes okay. in. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll comes in. No, no, that. let's go. I want to see what happens. No, no, no. Let's let's continue no, with what you were going to say. No, no, it's more. No, no, no. What you're saying is more interesting. We've had, we've true. also had the we've also had this uh, discussion before at, about uh, the who? Young Turks uh, oh, yeah, in yeah, like yeah. 2017 or yeah. something back when yeah, way back in the day. It's um, possible to be attached to your Jewish identity to be as Jewish passing as I am. Um, I'm not religious, but culturally. I'll say I'm Jewish. It's also very possible for someone like me to be extremely sensitive to anti-Semitism in North America and in Europe, and at the same time, in the same breath, to be unconditionally pro-Palestine. Well, that's, and that's like, in its foundation, a lot of I'm like derailing. Jewish leftist movements literally were radical yeah. communist uh, the Bund. Uh, people, They're you know the, what I mean? Yeah, the Bund. Yeah. There's a lot of that in old school New York. Like anti-Nazi, oh, anti-fascist, yeah. yeah, unconditionally yeah. for obvious reasons, and like what it has turned into because of like a lot of uh, Zionist lobbying and, and um, you know... Various more more various shades of 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 Kutchnerness. Yeah, there's a lot of... Yeah, there's a lot of reactionary groups that uh, uh, were able to take over the entirety of the discourse and yeah. present it as one way yeah. bundism somebody was like okay they know what that means um yeah. you're right and also and also you know even the term even zionism has uh has 
different significations throughout the eras and different shades of it. Unfortunately, now the practical meaning of it is something we don't identify with. Well, yeah. At least when I say that was the royal we, um, I don't yeah, identify. It is it's turned into just the complete uh, evisceration of Palestinian life yes. uh, because yeah. it's like unmanageable to survive alongside it. And that's why you hear people that literally say stuff like, oh, yeah, you, you want Palestine to exist. That means you want you all, Jews. all Jews to die. You want, you know, yeah. you hate Jews. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, uh, it's very difficult to and I, and have I, that conversation. Yeah. Dave, do I listen to T. Grizzly? I do. Yeah. In France, the media tries to put Muslim against Jews everywhere. Everywhere they do that. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, but, but, you know, it's like for someone yeah it's it's if if you are if your identity is is hybrid like that right like if you're you know my mom she only it's french and arabic if you see what she looks like she doesn't look she looks like she's from lebanon or syria um she she doesn't have any real personal relationship with israel she went from morocco to canada all she wants is to go back to morocco and and yeah. listen to arabic music you know what i'm saying like those identities exist and and for someone like me it's very it's both possible to be attached to jewish cultural identities to a certain degree i don't you know i don't rail about it all day and to be sensitive to anti-Semitism, to acknowledge its existence but to say that in the grander the bigger scheme of things um the Palestinian issue is something that we must address. Anyways, and, okay, uh, and often don't, and it gets Israel it, it, never, it, it completely uh, gets like uh, pushed aside, cast aside. Unfortunately, think of, what do I think of the French elections? That's a whole thing too. Yeah, yeah. What do you what do you think about the French elections? Yeah, Mélenchon crazy. had a good shot, but once again, I think so. So. I, something I read about him actually that kind of connects with what we talked about before. Um, he didn't have a good shot. I mean, he was whatever. No, no, no. I'm saying he had a good shot of, of uh, at least defeating uh, Le Pen to make it to the first round. I mean, he was very close. He, he was, he was close. like uh, within 400,000 yeah. votes or something, which is nothing, close. especially when you think about the coalition of other like supposedly leftist social democratic groups yeah. that basically ran against him as spoilers to ensure that it was a Le Pen versus Macron uh but see, for instance, up. this is this is. I mean, I'll give you another example. Like, um, I hope I'm not butchering his name, but Jeremy Corbyn. Oh, yeah, I UK? love Corbyn. I know you do, but see, me, there's certain things where like there's a little anti-Semitic rub. There's oh, things. No. I, I don't. Yo, I don't, think, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Okay. All right. I think. I think you got I know whipped you up. Him. I think you got whipped up with the, uh, with the with the media frenzy against. No, them. I didn't. There's certain. But you know what? I'll give him the benefit of the doubt because at the end of the day, I want more politicians like that in the world. So, but there's certain things. Anyways, in terms of. Uh, uh, Why do you think that? Why do you think Corbyn's an anti-Semite? I don't think he's an anti-Semite. Or or has like uh, anti-Semitic characteristics. No, it's not even that. It's if you take that little piece of discourse. First of all, his his pro Palestine stance is probably dem demagogical as well. What do you mean? He's doing that to kiss ass. He's no, doing that I think for the no, votes. no, no. He's he's. If you look in his history, you'll see. Yeah. I don't think it is because he is like always. He was anti apartheid. Like mm -hmm. he's always been an advocate for marginalized people all around the world. Um, since day one, like he yeah. his. I think his biggest faults, uh, his biggest failure is was being stuck at the leadership of the Labour Party at the, the time, failing, yeah. dealing with splinter, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. splinter infighting within yeah, yeah, the Labour yeah, Party, yeah, 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 yeah. which came out was like literally yeah. using the anti semitism discourse against him. To and you like know what? Maybe destroy this, him. Maybe this is me being a fragile Jewish snowflake. No, no that's not what I'm saying. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe I'll be open to it. I'll take it. No, um, I don't think it's that. I think it's just the, the, in the <laughs> when you have a overwhelming, overwhelming amounts of information that, uh, you know, from every facet of media saying a person is one way, it's very no, hard to overlook on, that. I know better than that. I'm a big, okay, whatever. Um, anyways, but I read something in the French media the other day, and it's a word I never learned, I never heard before, an expression I never heard before, and they call it uh, red-brown, rouge-brun. Oh, red-brown alliance? Uh-huh. Yeah. And, and, and those are, that's the expression they use to denote the socialist positions that have a dangerous overlap. No, that's bullshit. There, uh -huh. I, I know, I know what you're saying, and that's a that's a real thing. Like coups no one, engaging. no one is above pro propaganda. Somebody said that. I like that. That's that's honest. Yeah. Too. Um. Fuck the you, the thing is that like uh, Menachem has openly stated, you know, mm. not a single vote should go to Le Pen mm. from this party. Mm. 
Mm -hmm. And uh, I think the reason why they're trying to present it as such is because, once again, I think that anyone that is even a social democrat or anyone that is like a legitimate social democrat or anyone that's a communist, anyone that's a socialist is seen as like an actual fucking threat to the established uh, capitalist order and therefore will be uh, disparaged in any way. Like, no matter what you do to these people, no matter what you say about these people, they will fucking... It's, it's fine. It's justifiable. It's worth it because... Let's backtrack, right? You're, yeah. Let's back. The people who guide your political beliefs, which is normal, regular, working class people, folks. Mm -hmm. They don't give a fuck about anything we just discussed. Right? Yeah. They want a job. They want benefits. They want safety. They want stability. Do you feel like the ideological discourse on the left and sometimes the culture wars that go with it is alienating these people and is forcing them to be like, you yeah. know what? These people, these liberals annoy 100%. me. I don't relate with them. I just want my job at the at the power plant or wherever it 100%. is. One hundred percent. I agree. Yes. Isn't in the absence that that that's also what keeps me up at night? Yeah. In the absence of labor militancy, in the absence of real organizing, in the absence of clear, consistent uh, policy positions that one side is advocating for po and poli championing. Policy positions is key. Yeah. You're gonna get wedge issues that Republicans, oftentimes reactionaries, create. To they love them. To, to focus uh, focus their f uh, POV, to focus everyone's POV elsewhere. Yep. They're creating battles yep. where no such battle should ever exist. Abortion is a great example of this. Obviously, there is like a super f vocal minority of Republican voters that are active voters and in the base that care about abortion. But mm. outside of that, like 30% of Republican voters, which is a fraction, right? Abortion is pretty much a, a, a clear cut, open and shut, super precedent in the Supreme Court. 75% mm. of Americans have mm. consistently polled over and over again uh, and, and have supported Roe v. Wade yep. as the law of the land. Yep. And yet, for some reason, we're still having anti-abortion bills being passed through Republican legislatures yes. in states. Uh, and it's same with like LGBT issues. Somebody asked if I listen to Chef Khaled. Yes, my mom loves that shit. Anyways, go on. I'm sorry. I'm so, getting distracted uh, yeah, by so, chat. But the reason why we have those wedge issues and the reason why we constantly constantly have ourselves constantly on the left and, and liberals as well constantly fucking defending against certain actions that republicans are taking is because republicans should be on the back foot republicans should be actually reacting to progress except that but they're if, but creating, if we're not going to push creating, for progress or they're creating these false controversies to uh distract us from the fact that either, yeah. either yb is better ratio or that uh <laughs> They're trying to siphon working class votes away from, from YB is better. Yes, YB is better. That's funny. Okay. Here, I'll show you. Uh, here, here is one of my uh, favorite writers, uh, Alex Perrine. Yep. Uh, here it is. I he need says, to "Come here more often, man. This yeah. is fun." He says, "A lot of what people call polarization is just Republican polls and conservative mm. media making their audience hate things they used to like or be neutral, neutral on. on." Yeah. This seems important. There's an ongoing collapse in pro-institution sentiment among Republicans who disapprove mm. of colleges, big corporations, mm. tech mm. firms, media, entertainment, and unions. Basically, everything is bad except church because they hate like republicans in the 90s used to be like pro yeah, big course, corporations like advocate for corporations it was, it was the big money party of yeah course. but now they're like oh big corporations are bad too actually corporations because they're woke and gay you know so now you have people getting mad at that i mean and we, we, so we've both witnessed uh freedom of speech becoming a right-wing talking point right yeah which is insane when it's you insane. think about it because but they are the most I censorious i know well but yes and no you're an artist you're an artist you know this better than anyone else like they love the number 80 percent of books that are censored yeah. in the united states of america are censored by right-wing groups yeah. because they are books that are considered to be too radical whether yeah. it be socialist or whether it be like, you know, talking about LGBT issues. And yet, when you ask the Norman, the average common citizen, who's more censorious, they will immediately say the left, of course. Big corporations, yeah. Big corporations are the left. Yeah, and it's clever on their part to, on the one hand, want to ban, you know, social justice books. And on the other hand, to say that they advocate free speech yeah. in the face of big CRT, tech. because CRT is damaging. So that's why that kind of censorship is appropriate and, and justifiable. And, 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 and so to go back to what we were discussing at the very beginning, what keeps me up at night is those paradoxes. Like the binary, I, like, to me, we're way past the binary. We're, we're in this world of like absurd paradox. All right. I mean, you they're projecting. You have to agree. <laughs> no, I, 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 I think so. I think they're just like they're they're very ah, good. This at is one of the best guests Hassan has ever had. Thank you. I'll be back. 
<laughs> I like doing this. When I when I come, to, why don't I come? Whenever I'm in LA, I can come hang out with you. Yeah, because, for sure. Because actually, this discussion makes me feel better. Because you know we're all siloed in echo chambers, and my echo chamber drives me crazy, especially when I start doom scrolling right wing discourse to see if God forbid there's something in there that actually resonates with a talking point I have. Like, oh, no, my, you can't. You can't, can't match yourself. You can't match yourself against like charlatans who routinely use anything and everything to to propagandize their their deeply nefarious and and reactionary worldview that that's not something i do at all i, I i'm gonna I'm repeat grounded. that i'm gonna that's gonna be my mantra yeah that's just i'm grounded within uh you know no. dialectical materialism i believe what i believe in because i i apply materialism. dialectical materialism yeah but that dude that does from the 1800s bro no i mean it doesn't <laughs> i mean uh, i know I, it's like there's there's an application for it still though it's not like yeah. i'm not yeah. saying i'm like uh you know following marxist thought to, uh, as though it's a dogma don't you think that the dog that the problem with the prominent cultural leftists in america right now is that they're too dogmatic 100 not aware enough of the paradoxes we're talking about no i think that i think that there's a there's an issue with dogmatic uh, thought in in every kind of uh, ideology yes for sure but only I, one kind of ideology matters to us because it's ours so yeah. let's let's you know so no there is definitely that for sure i mean but but I think that the left overall is so feckless and ineffective in the grand scheme of things that like, I don't even think about, you know, uh, people being like, oh, you're not following the the uh, theoretical applications of Marxist Leninist thought. Like, I'm like, okay, off. like you're, I, you're off. I'm wearing a Gucci shirt. Let me go to Coachella. Well, that's not even I, a I'm thing. I'm chasing Most, after a seven foot girl right now. Gotcha. Uh, seven foot girl. Yeah, no, it's just like, that's not, that's, that's not something I concern myself with ever yeah, because right. like I... I find that to be, I find that to be like a strange thing to ever uh, focus on because of how little it's, uh, how little uh, meaning there is there. It's just, mm. they have nothing. There's no, there are no like real Maoist third worldists in America that are making an impact in policy. They, they are, they're functionally non-existent, yeah, right? Yeah, of course. Uh, whereas white supremacy and white supremacists and right-wingers and reactionaries Infiltrates are in our Infiltrates the politics. Supreme Court. Yeah, exactly. All so, the way like, up there. All the way, all the way to the top. So I only focus, yeah, I focus my efforts on like, you know, people that do matter and not just like random weirdos. Somebody, um, oh man, there's so many dope questions. Right. Go ahead. You can answer. No, answer it's somebody. fine. I gotta, I gotta go to the studio. But this Are you is, about to leave soon? Soon. This is fun. Somebody said I look like a version of you that doesn't work out. I, <laughs> I do yoga, okay? But maybe we'll do a workout stream. I mean, you, what happened, dude? What do you mean? <laughs> when I first met you, you weren't this jacked. No, 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 no. I was I was in better shape when you first met me. I think oh, what you happened find you're is in worse shape now. I, oh, I was in better shape, and then I got really fat over the course of COVID, Quarantine. and now I lost it. Uh. And so now I'm just like I'm still bulked up. I have residual bulk from you know from being. Uh. But fat. so, so did you work out every day? Yeah. I see. All right. Oh, well, that, that's yeah. But I used to work out every day back then too. Always worked out. Every yeah, yeah. You've always had that thing. Yeah, for sure. He ate all the cookies. That's true. I did. I did eat a lot of cookies last night. What were the memes you wanted to look at today? I want to look oh, at some memes before I dip. Before the memes, I wanted to show you the the thing about the industry. I think that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's let's, definitely let's something because I can't like. A little bit. Sure. So I, I hope chat will be. See how I say chat and not the chat. No, not it's chat. good. You're doing. You're doing a good I'm job. I'm doing good. You're right? already you're killing doing it. Great. Um. So this is Chloe Bailey. Wait. So I hope chat Ooh, is that. interested in this because we're we're veering away. From no, it's still about capitalism, though. It's got capitalism. All and right, how so exploitative the music industry is. Let's go. So this is Chloe Bailey talking uh, on this podcast or the show, talking about something that I was made aware of like a while ago. I have some artist friends, yeah. uh, you know, who, and I was shocked when I found out that like some of these top artists that you see are not exactly as like wealthy as you would think they are, even though they are generating a fuckload of, of wealth for others. Yeah. And uh, she basically nails it right here. At a lot of people, fans, viewers, listeners, they don't really know about the music industry. Like, it would shock them to learn that this is part of the process, right? We just be like, all right, where's the music? Let's go. You know, you can create music all day long, mm -hmm. but it's like, especially if you're signed to a label, you can't control your release dates yeah. or when things get released. Also, musicians don't make a lot of money in the mm. music industry. That's why you see a lot of people, they have brand deals and brand sponsorships. That's where the coin comes from in touring, but yeah, like music itself, like you're that. actually losing money. Wow. Yeah. Ain't that crazy? Uh -huh. 
Oh, my oh God. you want to know something else? Yeah. I learned this because I would produce Sis and I's records. Mm -hmm. Producers outside will get paid a huge lump sum, but because I would produce Sis and I's records, I couldn't get paid because I was the producer within the group. Now, hold up. Hold up. You're doing the same work, but not getting yes. a dime from it because it's your yes. own music. Yes. Now, how does that And make also, sense? like, I don't know if it changed within Grammys, but you know, like how they have producer of the year? I learned it from Imogene Heat because, mm -hmm. you know, she produces a lot of her stuff. So does Grimes, so does Bjork. They couldn't be contenders for producer of the year because they were the ones producing their own bodies of work and not for others. And notice how those are just the women I named. <laughs> Wow, I She's had no awesome. idea. Mm -hmm. The good thing is that even though you do lose money in the music business, mm -hmm. you get a coin from everything that comes from the music you're making. So, so it's like almost the music is almost like the ad. Mm. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's a business and sometimes it's sad to think of it that way, but that's why tours go big and yeah. everything. That's where you make your money and the big brand deals. So that's like a fact that not too many people know. They think it's like this huge high life thing. And yeah. It's crazy that uh, to think that like Mr. Beast, for example, in one year, who Mr. Beast, who's yeah. a he's a gigantic YouTuber, probably gonna be like the biggest YouTuber if he's not already the biggest YouTuber, kind of wow. functionally. Um, but Mr. Beast, I, I uh, don't know who that is. He made I think fifty six million dollars last year, like just in one year alone. Yeah, and that amount of wealth that he was able to generate as an influencer, as a YouTuber who Jeez. does like numerous other ventures as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that is unimaginable for an artist, right? Like, it's would you say that's that like that you have to be like a fucking world changing artist? Uh, yeah. uh, and not even like I don't, I don't, I don't think John Mayer is making that unless he like sells his masters or some shit. He does tour a lot. He tours a lot. The tours generate a lot. I yeah. think it's fifty. Um, but like, think about that. I just mentioned John Mayer and Mr. Beast in the same sentence, and we don't even know if uh, John Mayer makes more money than Mr. Beast in one year. Mr. Beast, you don't even know who the fuck he is. No Everybody knows who John Mayer is, <laughs> and that's precisely what I mean yeah. when I talk about this, where it's like uh, influencers, YouTubers make more money than these like incredible artists that everyone thinks are like some of the wealthiest people on the planet, and that's yeah. because the industry takes so much. Yeah, they do. They do, and it's and it's going to start changing, um, but you know. So I'll try to keep it short to not bore you or chat. But um, I think that the years uh, from let's say 1999 to 2000, um, I don't know, 15, 14, were some of the most incredible years in music, both in terms of business. And I'll say why, or anti-business, and in terms of the quality of the music that came out. So, like 1999 to 2014, piracy cre created this huge gap, and the music business wasn't selling. The, the music business wasn't working, and all the major labels were losing money. And you know, of course, you had Eminem that was selling records and Taylor Swift or whatever, but like everybody else, they were losing money. Piracy was so big, and I I look back at that time as an extremely subversive period in the music industry. Because they were and focused it, on art instead of money? Is that what you're saying? Dude, think about the bands that blew up. When the, when the, a band that like Arcade Fire or The Strokes, those like seminal indie bands that blew up during that time, they didn't blow up because of record sales. They sold brick. They weren't selling anything. Nobody was like, oh, they have X amount of millions of monthly listeners on Spotify. There's no such thing. Yeah. The music was completely downloaded, pirated, disseminated for free. And these people were making money off of tours and being so happy about it. And it was working, right? And then, of course, capitalism took over and the powers that be took over. And I remember... And Metallica. And I remember clearly a conversation happening in 2016 when somebody told me and my brother, the music business is making money again. And that is when, you know, streaming platforms became kind of the dominant way of yeah. consuming music. And anybody that knows... But it doesn't even mean... It doesn't even translate the dollars Correct. for artists, though. It Correct. just translates the dollars for big brands, Correct. big budgets, labels. corporations, yeah. Yeah. labels. Zero point zero, uh, zero point zero seven, zero point zero zero seven dollars per, per, for one stream. That's insane. Yeah. That's insane. It's yeah, just, it's insane. Yeah. I mean, so, and, and by the way, some, some artists stream so highly that they, they make money off of streams, but it's, it's really the middle class that suffers. But that's why it's you truly, also see, by the way, that's really what it is. Yeah. It's those middle class 
half indie, kind of like medium size, the ones that's, that play the Fonda and the Wiltern, yeah. those are the ones that are feeling it. Yeah. It's um, not the headliners, not the Coachella headliners. But that's also that's also how you see like people uh, get like that's how you see like talent get developed. You have uh, this is the age of like the Instagram influencer slash like, you know, viral sensation turning into an artist because it's so like with a producer, they could make me into a fucking artist. Like that's the unfortunate reality where like with good producers. Yeah. They could literally turn anything into uh, hit making gold. Yeah. And they've done it. Like there's a bad baby. That, yeah. There's, there's something that, uh, or there's, wow. There's something that's depressing about music right now. And I don't want to seem like I'm like this kind of, you know, old head complaining about it. Cause I do have a million optimistic views about both the music business, how to, how to, uh, uh, transform your model, your business model as a musician, as something that works and so on. We can talk about it another time, but for a long, for the last couple of years, TikTok has been such a tool for yeah. music discovery that you'll be at a record label and they'll be like, yo, if we're lucky, we're going to get a TikTok moment with your song. We're going to put $50,000 into hoping that you're, that a fragment of your song, 30 seconds of that song oh, yeah. is background music while a teenager dances. Oh yeah. And I'm, I'm, I'm like, bro, I'm 40 years old. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like it's crazy. Yeah, no, that so, and then boom, like it hits, well, and, or it doesn't. In most cases, it doesn't. Right? No, but like Jack Harlow, I like yeah, Jack Harlow's yeah, too, music. Great. Okay, I think he's great. I think he's very successful. He's he's doing it big for like the cool white people. Okay, he's just he's <laughs> no, he's doing it big for he's just dope. He's dope. I'm just no, no, I agree. I'm just he's saying dope. that like you know white people were not having a good moment for a while now. Okay, and he's just he's bringing it back. Right. Um. So. But not in a bad way, in a right, good way. Right, right, like, right. so I love Jack Harlow, but his music is like, I, I feel like some of his songs are tailored towards that. And that's yeah. part of the reason why he, he pops the fuck off. It's part of the game. But yeah. then, but then you have incredible TikTok success stories. Like, uh, you know, like, a, I mean, Steve Lacey became a, when platinum from TikTok hits without even trying. That's yeah, yeah that's what I was gonna say. Like um, it's just wild. Mitski, Mitski, the the indie singer who's incredible. She literally turned her phone off during quarantine, took all the apps out, and became a TikTok sensation. Unbeknownst to her, her friends were being like, "Yo, you're going viral." Doja on Cat. She's, like, she's well, don't yeah, but Doja's clever. She yeah. she is a TikTok success story, but she. She is very, very clever, and she's. I agree. And she plays the internet. She knows how to play that game. Yeah, Anyways, I agree. Um, there's a lot we could talk about with that, and it's insane. And we could talk about, but, but you know, we are in a period right now where the big corporations' hold on the music industry is massive, and it's. And when I'm talking about the big corporations, it's not even labels. It's Live Nation. It's AEG that puts on Coachella. We were just there, right? Yeah. Like, the festivals, the venue, the ticket buying services, all of that. So, um, yeah. Or the people that are buying masters as equity. That's a huge thing. Selling catalog as equity. There's more guaranteed revenue stability with music catalog now because of streaming yeah. than in real estate. So you can say, okay, Bob Dylan, this is what your catalog earns. Here's a multiple. Just sell everything to me. All right, chat. I'm I done. Should buy, I guys. should buy some catalogs. Is what you're saying? Buy I'm some a, of my I'm catalog. Start. With I'm going to invest with in, the streaming money. We'll, yeah, we'll I'm make a invest deal. In, I'm investing in Chromio, boys. <laughs> um, all right. Well, all right. thank you so much, Dude, Dave, for fun. coming. This was uh, this was I gotta, awesome. We got to do this more often. One hundred percent. I like those conversations, and I hope uh, you go and you do what you do best. I'm going to go to the studio. Thank you for having me, and peace, chat. You guys are fun. And you can make jokes at my expense. I love you- it. And oh, do people know this is a socks off house? Uh, uh, shoes, shoes off house? Yeah, I yeah, tell, they great. know. Because I, I yell at my friend Austin I who comes that. over and he never takes his shoes off. I'm like, bro, take your shoes off. <laughs> Respect. Hassan, this was so fun. Yeah. Thank you. Awesome. All right. Thanks Bye-bye. for coming on, man. Hey, if you like this video, please subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. <laughs> okay. I should have done Batman voice. That's what I should have done. <laughs>